And three, two, one. Damn. Damn. Salo for lover. Kia ora, ma lele, aloha bulivinaka, whakalo falahiatu, kia ora na, and was goody everybody. Was goody. This is Frosty DJ Waves, Rolly yep. and Nancy, and we are the Uso Good. Table Talk Podcast. Let's go. Let's Let's go. go. Hello. <laughs> What's up? We're out here at the Hills Podcast and Video Studio at Bella Vista Hotel. Yep. Shout out to Bella Vista Hotel. Shout out. 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 What's up everybody? That's good. Alright, episode five, guys. Jeez. Here we are. Episode, episode five. Jeez. I just want to send out a huge love to everybody for um, supporting us and sharing the love that they were yeah, the way man. you guys are. So thank you so much. Yep. This is uh, love. honestly love. It's an honor that we get to do this. Uh, we don't have to, but we get to do this. This is exactly. really good. Um, but right now we're gonna go to a game. We're gonna go straight there. Oh, straight into that straight game, into boys. That game. Into the cut along, huh? I'm gonna give it to the sort of Rawley who's gonna right, bring right. us a game. So I hope this is fire because I'm gonna win. This is fire. All right. So we've been in, as, no, as you all know, we've been in lockdown for quite a while now. Mm. And even more than that, a lot of us have been outside of school for ages. <coughs> so I thought it's only right that the game this week be a school game, a spelling bee. Oh, oh, the kids. Oh, the kids have been out of school. Yeah. All right. Oh, but even for the kids as well, if you're watching in. For you us. <laughs> oh, yeah. We've been out of school for a while. Spelling bee. Oh, I wasn't really in school when I was at school. <laughs> Wow. I graduated high school 2016. Wow. Yeah, he means that he was um, a master at truancy. This guy. <laughs> this guy. What do, you, what do you call um, skipping school here? It's jigging in Sydney. Jigging. Yeah. Solo, but oh. we call it wagging back in the Z. We oh, call in it Brizzy, wagging. In Brizzy, we call it wagging. Yeah, wagging. wagging. We call it skipping. That um, sounds wack. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, back to the game we're about to win. Back anyway. to the game. Sorry. It's a spelling bee. All right. And Solo, you won't believe it, but these are year eight words. Huh? So like, and I'm looking at the list and he's <laughs> Do you want us to do a spelling bee? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got this. Don't worry. All right. Let's go. All right. So like, does everyone know the rules of spelling bee? <laughs> Surely yes. everyone. Yeah. Yeah. So if you get it wrong, I'll, or like, I'll stop you. But if yeah. you get it right, then. All right. Let's go. You move so, on to the next round. So it's last man standing. So so it's last man standing. Uh, That's how it works. Can we ask, like, put in a sentence or clues? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Because I have it all here. Can you put in a sentence? Yeah. Uh, you, bro, oh, bro, do you know who you're talking to? <laughs> Surely. 2016 graduate, baby. Oh, wow. yeah, let's go. That doesn't mean anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, bro. All right, so we'll start with our. Uh, oh, Joe, we'll go this way. We'll go this way. All right, all right. So, Nonny, we'll start with you. All right, fine. Okay. Your first word is. <laughs> Sole, this is a year eight word. Are you ready? Stop. Hyperbole. What? 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 Hyperbole. Sole. Good luck. Year eight in like freaking Narnia. What the? <laughs> uh, are you sure it's hyperbole or hyperbole? Can you never act Sorry? confident again? <laughs> Sorry, is, is that Sorry? like the Super Bowl? <laughs> <laughs> no, really, Are serious. you being serious? Super Bowl. Huh? Super Bowl, it's a term in English. He <laughs> said he said a different word. Huh? Completely different what did word. You say? Hyperbole. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, well, I'm going to guess it. Use yeah. it in a sentence. No. <laughs> you said you can use it in a sentence. Alright, yeah. I'm going to give it a crack. Don't judge me, everyone. Hyperbole, H Y P E R B O L E. Hyperbole. What? Sorry. It's, hy- it's hyperbole. No. You got it right. <laughs> you got it almost. Everything was right, but the P. The P is meant to be a B. Oh, hyperbole. Hy- hy- I freshed out a fresh. <laughs> that was hyperbole. a fresh. You know what? I reckon we should. Hyperbole. Get- you know what you're talking about then? Yeah. So what is it? It's it's a term you use in English literature. English? Yes, yes. Oh, so you should Wait say sorry. Wait a minute. <laughs> You're smart. <laughs> That's the only thing I learned in English. No. Thank you, Miss uh, De Cruz. <laughs> what? <laughs> bro, I am sorry also. Yeah, I'm thought, sorry too, bro. No, sorry, you so a hyperbole is an exaggerated statement or claim not meant to be taken literally. Oh, and okay. It's yeah, pre- yeah. yeah, it's so pronounced this hyperbole. Guy. <laughs> Who is this guy? Oh. Hey. Hyperbole. Hyperbole. Next wow. word, are you ready? Why are you amazed for? I'm sorry. You thought I was stupid. <laughs> I'm even Wait being rude. A minute. <laughs> wow. Me being amazed is being rude, I know, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> but you, you've amazed me. Well, thanks, man. Uh, Mia, your word is caracol. Caracol? <laughs> you put it in a sentence. Can I call? <laughs> caracol. Caracol. Yeah. You want the definition or? Yeah. yeah. 
It's a half turn to the right or the left by a horse. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you look at your shoulder? Nah, you're sad. 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 You're C O L E. Oh, that's incorrect too, Miles. Oh, it was C A R A C O L E. Aaron, your yes. word is connoisseur. That's my wife's favorite ice cream too. Oh, if she and, can't spell it, can I have? And it I'm about to butcher it. Okay, because I, I don't remember how to spell it. Connoisseur. C O N. Keep going. Oh, you got to wait for a reaction. <laughs> I. <laughs> I. S. Oh, I R. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's, a, there's an E in there. I'm no, sorry, if there's no stealing points here, mate. Oh. It's just your word and your word only. Uh, sorry, your sort, but that is incorrect. Can you give me the definition? It's an expert judge in matters of taste. Ah, uh, yes. Oh. You mean connoisseurs? Right. Like a connoisseur. Do you mean connoisseurs? Wow, that's that's an actual job. Are you, are you Bro, sure? that's, I'd, that's me. I'd love that job. <laughs> I'd love that job. <laughs> I, I'll be crap at that job because even not good food, I'm oh, it's okay. <laughs> Sorry, bruschetta. Oh. Oh. Sorry, I love that taste also. I love uh, that taste also. I gotta share that very little background story. <laughs> right, bring it up. Aaron went and I uh, said, so, um, which episode was it? We we recorded episode three. Three, yeah, three. three. So after episode three, we we gave it to Aaron to um, book us a place at a like a restaurant, and um, we went. We were so keen, man. We were so hungry. We were so keen to to get a feed. And we're just ready. We're so excited. Plus, Aaron, he he, like we know that this guy knows some good restaurants. He knows his food, mm. and he knows his food too. So food, right? <laughs> some would say he's a connoisseur. Yes. <laughs> so some we get there. We get there, and man, it was the worst experience we've ever uh, had. Like this, this lady brings out this pizza called bruschetta pizza. No, let me explain. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> this guy, butchery. We go there. Yeah. Okay. Um, I order. I see bruschetta pizza. So in my mind, I'm thinking it's just bruschetta, cheese, and all that because it says pizza. Mm. And then I get, oh yeah, I get the bruschetta pizza. She brings it out, and it's literally a pizza base just baked, right? Yeah, you guys, you oh, one yeah. with just bruschetta on it. It was on our story, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No Gross. cheese. So yeah, and then she comes over. Yeah, she comes over. She brings it over, and we're just like all having a little taste. And this guy literally. Like Aaron just literally tried it to was. spit it out yeah. pretty much. So there's no <laughs> So there's no cheese yeah. on the pizza. I was getting there. Yeah. <laughs> you were. Yes, I was. That happened before we tasted Anyways, it. Anyways, the cheese was not on the the pizza. So Yes. The cheese was not on the pizza. The cheese was not on the pizza. <laughs> okay. There was no cheese on the pizza. And you specifically so asked. So then me. I said, hey, so this pizza comes with no cheese. She goes, No, it's a bruschetta pizza. It's just bruschetta. She goes, but they did forget the cheese, so I'll go and get it. So I was like thinking, what's going on, right? Yeah. And the season that we're in wow. with COVID and everything, she comes and brings some like cheese. She grabs it with her hair, no glove, and just goes. Solid, no glove. <laughs> and then she goes, <laughs> just sprinkles. <laughs> there we go. Pizza. It's okay now. It's not okay. <laughs> it's not. It's not okay. Man. So uh. yeah, we labeled that the bruschetta pizza. <laughs> hey, it was legit toast with onions. Yeah, if you know, you know. Oh, uh, but. Trash, bro. Disappointed. Yeah. I was very disappointed. So the next word, disappointed. <laughs> T. <laughs> right, anyway, back to the game, bro. Right, let's go. Okay. No, no, you got to redeem yourself. So your word is deplorable. Deplorable. Yeah. Deplorable. 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 D e p l o r a b l e. Deplorable. That's got to be right. That's right. That's correct. Oh. We got our first <laughs> number one. Well Can you say one? Applaudable for me. Sorry, I think it's applause. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> leave, leave the game yeah, to me, mate. mate. Oh, you're applaudable. <laughs> yeah, I'm applaudable. Yes. Ah. Redeemed. Redeemed. All right, All right, let's go. Next word, Mia. This that was the last round, by the way. So yeah, yeah. to tie it up, your word is epicondylic. Wow. 
Epicondylus. That's so easy. <laughs> so, oh, wow. Epicondylus. <laughs> Solid back yourself, G. Oh, yeah. Epicondylic. I think I know how to spell it. Uh, e P I C O N D A L I C. E L I C. Oh, E L I C. It's a Y. It's a y. L Y C. Oh, because oh, it's a tablet. Wow. So, so close. <laughs> e P I. Because it's a. It's a pharmaceutical. <laughs> it's a. It's a uh, oh, is that because it was supposed to be Y before C? Except like the C. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. It's no, like, I was like, yes. Nope. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Sorry, so it's spelled E P I C O N D Y. So I was so confident. I was like, oh, no, it's E L I C U. And. Epicondylic is a long bone in your body. Which oh. one? Um, <laughs> connected to your femur, no, no. Oh, really? Yeah. Mad. What? I learned something yeah, new. I thought the femur was only bone on your thigh. Yeah, that's right. It's connected to. Connected to it. Yeah. Like up here or down there? Um, wherever you want it. <laughs> <laughs> How do you want it? <laughs> How do you want it? <laughs> 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 nah, 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 yeah. okay. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Aaron, last word to tie it up with Noni. Your word is ballistic. 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 B A L L I S T I C. G. That's correct. Oh, 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 oh. Ballistic. Ding, 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 ding. Thank you. <laughs> all right, all that, ladies wow. and gentlemen, was what our game. game. Ah, what a game! That was our game for uh, episode five. Right, next week will be mathematics, boys. <laughs> well, I'm not here next week. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So um, right boys. now we're going to go to our next uh, segment, which is what's the jam? The USA Table Talk Podcast. Hold up a second. What's the jam? All right. This is my first time doing what's the jam. So bear with me. Um, so, um, I've been following this guy, um, so it's a bloke, I've been following him on Insta for almost two years, and um, mm. man, he's, he's like next level, bro, he's, um, his name's Mr. Findaway, Oh, and there's a meaning to it, Ooh. his other, um, obviously his real name is Michael Leal, yeah. he, and he's a personal trainer, yeah. and he's based in uh, Newcastle, so shout out to you, bro. Shout out, shout out. Um, so, uh, what he does is uh, obviously practice. Practice and uh, practice uh, resistance strict strength group training. So it's kind of like F45, but mm -hmm. this guy, bro, he's like all in it, you know. Yeah. And um, <coughs> um, he, um, the the play, uh, the obviously his business that he owns is called uh, Find a Way Fitness. And oh, okay. um, the reason why his name is Find a Way is because it's pretty self explanatory. Yeah. Can you spell that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <Mom? laughs> uh, and um, and it and it pretty much means that he doesn't just train bodies, but he also trains the uh, like mindsets as yeah. well. Ooh, just to right. just to give that extra push, like yeah. in in the training that he that he mentors. Yeah, you know? yeah. And right, it's it's crazy. And um, uh, I was talking to him. I actually messaged him yesterday. It was yeah. yesterday. Yeah. And um, yeah, he was like, I asked him, oh, no, is it alright if I could, you know, if mm. I could promote you or like just um talk about you and uplift you you know yeah, and then yeah. he was like he was like yeah for sure and then i asked him like you know what what's your what's your heart for this and he's like his heart it, this is it's a, his heart is for the people yep yeah um and he wrote that um his aim with all that he's doing is to motivate our people um because for years and years we have this mindset of we can't do well for ourselves so i'm, I'm talking about polynesian people like yeah. our polynesian mm -hmm. com community and like um he's saying that you know, we have this mindset of we can't do well for others, uh, or we can't do well for ourselves, yeah. and we can't be successful business owners. Mm. And uh, but he mentions that he's trying to change that way of thinking for us Islanders. Mm, yeah. And um, that's good. Yeah, man. Like, man. Like, I remember last year he was like uh, just doing like training every now and then, but I th and then I think it was just like once uh, the start of this year. I think he fully like just made up his. Uh, decision to just take it yeah, full, on, full on, you know. 
and they yeah. took it with his own hands and then bro he, he just started promoting it mm. and then he yeah. started, and then like just started connecting with people yeah, and yeah, yeah. Man, man. he's got like man he's got like uh, like apparel as well and like oh, all his outfits and stuff he does it as a living you know yeah. and he trains every day and I'm like like that. <laughs> oh, bro, I love that he changed the mindset too because to do stuff like that your mindset has to be pretty yeah. strong as well yeah, yeah man he pushes hard man and, bro that's um, awesome man yeah bro his, his training is like out of the ordinary like that's the way I see it yeah yeah. and um and um yeah pretty much just give him a follow uh, I'll we'll post I'll, I'll send you the, the link for it yeah definitely um so ladies and gentlemen we if, you, if this is your first time actually listening What's the Jam is actually a, a segment where we kind of introduce and Talk about poly people who are killing yeah. it in business or anything really in life. Hey. So we just want to give a huge shout out to uh, find a way, um, find a way fitness. fitness. Uh, shout out, yeah. man! Find love, a way love, love. Yeah, yeah. So if you guys have any suggestions or like some people that you sh- you want to mm, like us give us to highlight, uh, let us know. Let us know, mm. um, and we'll check them out. Yeah, we'll definitely give them some love and love it. Hundred yeah. yeah. percent. Find a way fitness. Wow, sure, those cool, sexy, bro. Shop that was sexy. Sexy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was what's the jam. Yeah, so episode five. So right now we're going to go into our next segment, mm. and it's an important segment. It's, it's a segment where we get to share um, our thoughts and you know uh, realities that we face. So yeah. right now we're going to go into the hot tala, the Uso Table Talk podcast. Hot tala, hot tala, hot tala. Hot tala. That's hot tala for you, bro. Let's hot go, tala. hot tala. <laughs> wow. All, All right. right, so hot tala. I get the honor of bringing a hot tala this week. And this one's a hot one, bro. Like, uh, hot tala, uh, like I explained again, <laughs> I'll explain again. Hot tala is a segment where we kind of really go there with our, our conversations. Mm. Uh, we talk about realities and, and things yeah. that our people go through. Um, also, like, it's a hot, like, understand we're not professionals. Yeah. And mm. we're not trying to come across as, like, yeah. judgmental or anything. But our heart is for our people, man. We definitely yeah. want to talk about realities yeah. and talk about uh, things that we've kind of grown up with. And maybe, you know, if you feel at all like you're in any way upset about what we, we talk about, we honestly are coming across um, with, with full of grace and, mm. and full of love. Like, cool. we don't want to try and offend anybody. Um, but yeah, man, we're trying to normalize these kind of conversations. Yeah. And this, that's our heart. That's our heart is mm. to really conversate and come across with, like, give hope to those situations that we go through. Yeah. So right now, um, I actually want to talk about... Um, I'll share a story. Um, I was actually talking to one of the, um, a girl um, on our page, yeah. uh, through our page. Uh, she had um, posted about, um, she had posted about her little her little brother who yeah, was in jail. Yeah. And I I messaged saying that you know we're sharing we're we're sending love and and we're yeah. praying for your little brother. And so they had a they had a um, a video call. Oh, wow. They had a video call because I, I think that's the way you kind of visit. I don't, I'm not sure how it works. Yeah, COVID, you can't. Oh, yeah, visit Skype. Now. They yeah, Skype each other. Okay. So they had um video called um and I asked and I just asked a few questions like you know is there anything we can pray about or, mm. and you know I, I we I prayed about him I prayed about um you know just making sure that he's he's safe in this time, and she had commented and said that like, um, she misses him so much. You know his, his character is not who. Um, you know, people in jail are deemed to be, or yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. and he is actually a PK. Um, PK, oh, if you don't true. know, is a pastor's kid, yeah. and it made us. It made me think a lot. Like, and there's no completely no judgment to mm. PKs. You know, um, uh, we're they're human no. too, and we love them. And what I want to talk about is, um, is this question that raised that raised up when I when I was thinking about the conversation I had with this person, and I thought. Like when you look at the when you look at the kids coming through our system yep. right now, our justice system, um, you know, there's so many of them who are islander. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's so many of them who are Pacific Islanders and when you when you kind of go break it down to like their backgrounds, a lot of them are actually churched. Come from yeah. Or come from a church background yeah. or have parents who are heavily involved with church. Mm. And so the question I want to I want to ask and bring to the table is, like, what's going on between the gap of or Sundays, like you know, the church, like how how people go to church on Sundays, to to the the um, realities that people face on our Mondays. Yeah, you know, it seems like it's constantly a a battle that a lot of our people are going through. Yeah, 
you know, there's so many young people who are involved in church, but then get caught, yeah. get caught up in, in a lot of the different lifestyles mm. that are out there. So that's something I want to bring to the table, and I'll leave it out to you, Source. Bro, that's a big one, eh? I'm not going to lie. It's that's heavy. a big yeah, one, man. It's heavy. To explain it better, yeah. um, I'll use this analogy. Yeah. Um, so everyone's heard of the game Chinese Whispers. Yeah. Right? So there's a message that gets told from the beginning of like from the first person to the last person mm. and in between like that message is kind of muddled up or there's things that people yeah. face within with between that thing between um the beginning of that message when it was first told to, to the person that we're getting it to what's going on in the middle there and i want to talk about that middle space that middle space yeah um you know i want to talk about the middle space of what's going on between when the message gets to, um, delivered on a sunday mm. to the mondays that our kids or our, even ourselves face, yep. you know, the realities we deal with. Um, I remember personally, and I'll open up with a little story. Uh, personally, I remember being told so many times when I went to a youth that I was I was growing up in um, in Brisbane. Um, so many times I'd get told, like, you know, you're going to be a world changer. At the time, I wasn't even saved, mm. to be honest. I didn't even know Jesus mm. the way I know him now. Yeah, And I remember going home. Um, I I know I said that I did I didn't raise get raised with a father, but I did have a um, a stepfather who I don't really kind of acknowledge as a father. Mm. Um, but personally, um, I would go home to like abuse and domestic violence from from him, and it was such a time in my life where I felt like I'm not really who people say that that I could be. You mm, know? Yeah. yeah. I was going home to realities that were so different to what people were saying about me. Yeah. Mm. People were saying like, oh, you know, as soon as I introduced my name, people were like, that's a mighty name. That's a that's a, that's a a powerful name, man. Like yeah. Jeremiah is a powerful name. I used to think, I don't feel so powerful, man. Like I, f- I felt like little, if anything, mm. when I went home, I went to a reality where I was getting talked down so, so much and, and my stepdad would constantly, you know, abuse that. Yeah. And that was a... Uh, that was a real moment in my life yeah. that I feel like a lot of people are going through. You know, Sunday is different to Monday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's true. Um, yeah. uh, I've heard it. I've heard this like that message. Like I've heard the me- like that message being preached um, of saying like, let your Sundays not just be on Sunday. Like yeah. let it be like every day. Mm. Like yeah, yeah. treat your Sundays like every other day. Of yeah. your of your of your week, yeah, and um, and it didn't, like you could just say it like as easy as that, but in reality, like man, if you put that into if you put that into action, it's just like it's just so hard for people that I'm not from you know um good homes or you know homes that are you know that are not broken because yeah. um oh like I wouldn't say my house was broke like my. House was broken. My home was broken. <laughs> my home was broken. But um, like, obviously there was times where I did feel like, you know, I was um, like, I felt like the message was, it was just like I couldn't relate to it because, because my life was just completely, completely different. Different, mm. yeah, yeah. To to what the message uh, that was being preached to me, but um, I think for me, like, in order for me to um to, to um, take it take it uh literally i had to maybe um i had to just uh break it down a bit break it down um take courage yeah yeah and just 100 percent. and just like um take that first step and just be like you know what i'm gonna make my monday the same as every other day i'm gonna treat it i'm gonna treat it as uh you know as as a sunday you know i'm gonna place god first every day like at the start of my day and at the end of my day like no matter how low or no matter how how high um my day can be, yeah. and um, yeah, yeah that's just, that's yeah. that was the way I, I I saw it. But like, obviously, there was a long period where I like I didn't really have a personal relationship with God, yeah, yeah. and I was just brought into church because of that's how that's how yeah, that's yeah, how yeah. I was brought up, yeah. And um, yeah, obviously, I was I was very, I was very confused. I, I I was questioning it a lot, and it wasn't until obviously I had that experience with God that's when I just mm. started to just um. Take things li- literally, and then just take courage, and just and take that first step. Mm, yeah. Good. So yeah, so up, bro? What's up, what's up? Yeah, man. That gap is tricky, man, because mm. a lot can happen. Yeah. In yeah. that space. Yeah. Um. 
personally, I believe that everyone at the end of the day mm-hmm. makes their own decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely, definitely. But in saying that, there are factors that go into making that decision. Yeah. And for me, one of the factors in me making my decisions was my family having a great support system. Yeah, that's good. Um, you no, know, like having family there, church. And all of that went into me making my decisions and ending up where I am. And I am well aware that some people don't have a support system. Maybe yeah. don't have strong families or churches behind them. Yeah. And don't have those positive voices or role models or people to look to in their life. Yeah. 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 And so it is so easy for me to sit here and say, like, people make their decisions at the end of the day. Yeah. But there's just so much that you got to take into account. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. And that's true. Yeah, <coughs> like it's my famous. like my reality. Although like you no, know, like we're all sorts in that. Yeah, our realities are so different. Although yeah, we're all true. Polynesian. Yeah, and you no, know, like people think, oh, Polynesian must be all the same. No, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, we all go through different stuff, and there's different factors within our decision making that yeah. Yeah. make up who we. Are. There's so much in that question, eh? Mm. Like, yeah, hard, yeah, hard, it's hard. such a heavy question. Heavy, such and there's so question. many yeah. layers within that we can. Ah, uh, but yeah, I agree. Like, totally man, is. I just have a heart for those guys who. Yeah. Well, I just have a heart for our brothers and sisters who maybe don't have the privilege of having our you no know, a a a support system. Like, yeah. L- no, no, like I did growing up, and yeah. Uh, like I think it takes another level of, of like skin, man, and of courage to go through life the way they go through life. Yeah, yeah, oh, I love that. Also. Um, and honestly, I think we can learn a lot from them and their yeah. and their perspective and their view. Yeah, and I'd love to sit down and hear it, man. Yeah, because I like I could learn a lot. Yeah. Um, mm. but there's so much here that goes that that mm. happens from the. Sunday to the Monday, yeah. people's realities are completely different. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's home life, there's school, there's work, there's yeah. so much stuff within that man that goes into people making. And yeah, so please just don't be quick to judge. I think is what. Yeah, <laughs> like, I don't, know. Yeah, don't be quick to judge, man, because there's there's so much more than you no, know, there's so much going on than what you see right now. Yeah, 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 and right. <laughs> Yeah, I'd have to say <clears throat> with questions like this, there's so many different, yeah. so many different reasons, so many different answers, and yes. like going back to um, uh, talking about that message from this girl mm. and like her brother going through this, and that's so many of our struggles. Like mm. yeah. we know people that have gone through it, or we've yeah. been through it, and when you have a question like, "Where's what happens in the in between?" Mm. church and the streets yeah that's like, true the thing is one we need to realize that sometimes <laughs> the church sometimes does not seem like the answer to people yeah it doesn't yeah. yeah because sometimes it's so fu- not sometimes a lot of the times yeah let's be real and i'm yeah. not i'm not trying to put down the church any specific yeah. church i'm saying us us as guys that have been through Bible college and yeah. want to be in ministry, this is what we're talking about. Mm. Yeah. Like we want to, this is our heart, right? Yeah. yeah. So what I'm saying is that sometimes, like a lot of the times it's full of hypocrites and people that don't, you know, preach, mm. don't live what they preach. Yeah. So yeah. sometimes the question isn't always what is happening with these kids? Why aren't they hearing on a Sunday? Yeah. Sometimes it's they're seeing the pastor speak what he speaks and then during the week he's not the same guy. Yeah. So yeah. that so that that the Monday, mm. um, you know, does your Sunday carry on to your Monday? That's also a message for ministers. Yeah, yeah. you know uh, what uh, I mean. Uh, uh. Um, wow, flipping. Wow, flipping. Yeah. It's not yeah. always. Uh, that's don't wow. always put it on the youth. So yeah. just like witnessing the lack of leadership. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We um like recently we just had a uh, just had a conversation. We had a conversation with um an ex gang member, and he said that some of the most realist people. Yeah. That he, he met were in, the he gang. Gang. Uh, in the he gang. He didn't say in the church. Yeah. He said in the gang. Yeah. And that it comes from all these people that have you know lost certain things. Maybe grew up didn't grow up with the church or maybe grew up in church yeah. Yeah. and saw how fake it was sometimes. Yeah. And saw how fake leaders were at times. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they were done hard by by leaders. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we kind of act like um you know sometimes 
us as Christians, we act like the church is perfect. Yeah. yeah. No. You know? No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's a line. Uh, there are people. You know, that, you know, there's a line in yeah. um in you know Uncle Fiji. Yeah. You know one <laughs> of his songs, um, indigenous indigenous life. His first lyric is, um, "I come from a place where the warrior image is a dying breed, where missionaries flood the minds of people, um, uh, misleading them I and taking that. all their land with greed." I love that song. Okay, wow. mm. so <laughs> you know, and that's that's a reality of um, Hawaii. Mm. Of <laughs> missionaries came and their kids yeah, actually yeah. were a big, massive part of um, annexing Hawaii and taking. Mm. Yeah. So we need to remember that the church is actually full of people that have failed mm, yeah, so yeah. when we break it down and we look at why why are so many of our people so many of our boys going to church but yet living a gangster lifestyle or getting locked up or this and that yeah, yeah. it's not always on the kid we need to also look at the church mm, like yeah. what what are us not them as pastors us mm, as yeah. pastors us as ministers as future leaders yeah, yeah. what are we doing mm, yeah. are we living our sundays are we the same guy on mm, a sunday yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and then on a monday we're oh not really yeah you know I not just, okay not any of that i'm i'll start this off and then we'll like yeah. we'll talk yeah. about this also asking asking our youth to put on so many masks we've spoke about this before mm, yeah. to put on so many masks before they come to the pastor yeah, our youth, like one thing that I get annoyed at, right, is sometimes youth groups, you might hear some swear words from the kids, yeah, yeah, yeah some, yeah. and then the the adults, oh, look at these kids swearing, I need to talk, I need a meeting with the youth pastor. Yeah. Why are your kids swearing? How dare they come here and swear like that? If they're gonna swear like that, tell them to get mm. lost. Go swear at the pub. Don't swear at church. Okay, so that's a <laughs> right. view from a lot yes. of people. That's right. the mess. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sometimes the problem is the biggest problem in that kid's life is not that he's got a potty mouth. The biggest problem is maybe he's getting abused at home. Yeah, yeah. Hard. or maybe he's seeing your like sometimes your pastors not being who they're meant to be. You know what I mean? It can be flipped. Yeah, both it can be true. home, it can be church, it can be the individual kid. Mm. And I want to touch on that as well. Like, go ahead, also. Do you think? Do you think that a lot of the times, and this is coming from a personal place as well? Yeah, yeah. Do you think that a lot of the times? Our young people are honestly traumatized from seeing those masks of our like our family. And I'm not, I'm not saying my my family are fake or anything like that. Mm. Um, I just seen so many times where like Sundays looked so different to the realities of yeah. every other day, yeah. and that's kind of something that traumatized me and reminded me every time I think about it. I'm like, I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. Um. You know, that's a we're not perfect. Mm. We're not yeah. trying to be perfect, but. If anything, I'm working towards making my Sundays my everyday. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think young people now are so traumatized from the realities that they've seen our parents go through. Yeah. That it's almost made them turn off from church. Yeah. Like mm. church is 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 like honestly not something they think about. Mm. In all honesty, not something they want to they want to do. No. Nah. Yeah. I think. Um, um, for them, the way that they perceive the Sunday yeah. is that they've they've just um, they've just set a standard just so high, that so high, yeah. It's just it's just up this. Um, yeah. It's just so high that um, that every day, that every other day is gonna be like. Where am I taking this? Um, yeah, it's just it's just set so high that they just get turned off from that from yeah. that Sunday, and then it's just like you know what. I'm gonna just go back to the way I was. Yeah, yeah. I think that yeah. there's a constant question that they ask is yeah. like, "What are you doing on this yeah. Sunday? Yeah, and this service, this church service, mm. that's gonna affect my Monday. Mm. Yeah, you know, and that's constantly I think is a question that everyone's asking. Yeah, is am I just gonna go show up just to tick the box that I've been to church, mm. I go to church, and I'm a good Christian? Yeah, or am I gonna, um, you know, am I gonna really get something out of this? Or well, like even going back to like the whole we youth feel like we have to put on masks and facades and hide yeah. all our scars before we even step foot in church. Yeah. Um, not even church, but I think they they don't feel comfortable in really sharing who they are and how they feel Yeah, yeah with, hard. with people of authority. And it doesn't have to be just church, maybe even parents or... Um, friends or like school teachers, yeah. wherever they are, yeah. and That's true. that they have to go and do.
do something else or go somewhere else to talk about those things to to express those things to yeah. talk those things and maybe they find yeah. that in gangs or maybe they find that in drugs or alcohol yeah yeah and i love you know like touching back to to what you said Aaron about what i also was saying um the most real people that he knows even to this day were in gangs yeah. were in the gangs <laughs> and that's I, crazy i find it so so crazy man because yeah. that's even true with like some of the people that I've met, you know, like just around Mount Druitt. Yeah. Like they smell fake. Yeah. They <laughs> smell it on you. They yeah. smell yeah. it on you. They can call it out from the moment you say hi. Yeah. And yeah. There's something that there's some uh, no, like there's something that they've experienced. Yeah. Where they can just instantly separate who's real and who's not. Yeah. yeah. And what I find. No, <laughs> what I found funny is more often than not, most of the fake ones are found in places where we we vocally you know, like try and include people. Mm -hmm. And that's coming from people who's who've seen things that are just out so of, crazy yeah, and, out of the who, room, and who've just experienced things that are just yeah. mind blowing, man. Yeah. You know what um Touching based on uh, when you were saying like the transition between Sunday and Monday, yeah. Um, I think for me, like personally, um, I've experienced this, but like after church, like especially like 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 church at night, mm. like like there's always I always have that feeling that like I just want to stay at church, like after <laughs> yeah. the service, and like yeah. I don't want to go home. Like I just right. want to I just want to stay. I want to hang. I like I want to talk. Like I want to be, you know, involved with like with the church, but um. Because I don't want to go home and I don't want to go back to my week again. Mm, but yeah. um, mm. I think it, we just need to have that push to just understand that, you know, it could that could be like every other day. Yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, man, that's that's what I, I think. Saw. I think it's also um, like I know we've been talking about Sunday and Monday mm. in church. I think it's also the actual realization that it's actually not church that mm. saves people. Mm. Jesus, yeah, you get me. Yeah. Like sometimes it's we're so caught up in once you come to church then, then you're, you're then yeah. you're good yeah mm. you yeah know what no. I mean sometimes like when for instance if you weren't um, you know your grandma was bugging you or something mm. sometimes mm. Like, oh you know go on local like you know um, you know try to, try yeah. your best to go to church you know keep yeah. go, go to church go to church so then um, you finally like you might be whatever feeling empty inside. Or, whatever then you, but you want that love sometimes from yeah. family members and mm. stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. but then you only see that love when you show up to church yeah, yeah. you know what i mean so oh. it's like oh now oh you're a good boy you came to church <laughs> but it's actually not stepping foot into the church that makes you a good person mm. yeah you know what i mean Tell me about yeah. It, yeah. so yes i um what we're talking about with sunday like make sure our sunday carries on mm. yeah like yeah i i kind of agree with that mm. but i think it goes deeper that and obviously we know that like yeah, yeah. it goes deeper <laughs> than just a Sunday. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But that's something that sometimes we've made the four walls of church, the place of arrival of ultimate freedom and grace mm. that you come to church and even Christians, like I'm not, I don't know about you guys, but when I first like hard out found, like found that I had this relationship with Jesus, yeah. Yeah. I became that annoying dude yeah. that was messaging <laughs> everybody. Hey yeah, man, yeah. how you going? You should come to church. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I have a conversation, blah, blah, blah. Hey, you ever been to church? You want to come to church? And, and there's nothing wrong with that. No. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But what is wrong with that is when they don't come to church and then you stop talking to them. Yeah. True. Because mm. you go on to the next person. Yeah. Going, or they finally say yes, you bring them to church. Ah, uh, look, and then you and tell then all your church it. friends yeah. and you tell your connect group, yeah, oh, this guy, he's an atheist, but he came to church with me, yeah. right? <laughs> so then you get your points. Oh, wow, he, he knows yeah, non-Christians. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, then, yeah. and then your mate never comes again. Sadly. Then it's on to your next mate. Oh, prayer request for my other friend. He's a Muslim yeah. and he's going to mm. come to church. I just came, I just think that's like a pulpit flex right there. I think it is too, bro. <laughs> that's like a complete flex when you do that. Eh? I, bro, touching on that, I think, you know, like you, we were speaking about the gap earlier from the Sunday to, the, I think even within that, there's, 
Gaps are just everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So there's a gap from the Sunday to the Monday, like we spoke so about. Oh, many gaps. <laughs> when you so when people. you tick the box and you bring a non-Christian to church. Yeah. yeah. Hard. There's another gap from okay, you brought them to church. Now what? Bring them to Jesus. Like there's just so many gaps. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and on that, like even what if they say no? Yeah. What? What? You gonna stop messing? No. You know, for <laughs> for a while. <laughs> for a while, like. So I, every now and then I work security. Yeah. And sometimes I work on the doors at nightclubs. Yeah. So when I started going to church again and all that, sometimes if I'm off on a Friday or Saturday night, I'll go to see the boys on the doors. Like, hey, how you going? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Sometimes people from church would be like, whoa, why, why were you at the clubs? Are you gone? Are you, I, I, oh what are you God. doing? Are you, are you doing club things? <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you getting drunk? Are you? Uh, are honest, you mate. But they're my brothers. Yeah, mm. they they, yeah, they yeah. had my back when yeah, no yeah. one had my back. When you're at the bottom, when you're at the bottom, exactly. Bro. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 so, yeah. So sometimes it's like, um, like uh, I'm sorry, man, but where were you when I? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I still need to take care of my brothers. I can't yeah. just. That's where you get that term when when you start going to church. Oh, what a changes guy! Yeah. Oh, he's a holy guy. Dude. What a paia guy! Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I mean, it literally comes from this yeah. tr- um, this transformation. Like, oh, you need to just so, okay. Hold on. There was a season where I did have to. Yeah. I, yeah. I needed to clean my mind, get away from everything. Mm. But there was a time where I was like, I'm good. I'm gonna mm. go see my boys. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's it. Yeah. You know? like, so and. I love what you were saying about how you know, like you work at securities and then and on days off you come and see you know, your boys working on the doors, and <laughs> even like me working normal jobs, you know, like factory jobs, <laughs> working at the market and meeting boys, meeting all sorts who have never been to church or yeah. like don't have our experience with church, and have the idea that the you know, church is full of fake people, that the five feet hours so up here and I'm down here, when. When they meet people like us, or well, when they met me and they heard my story of church, they almost they're almost like, yeah. "What church do you go to?" Yeah, or like, bro. "How come you have this experience, but but I have this one?" Yeah, and how come you are not? You don't fit in the box mm. of how I thought a person goes to church would be, and that's what I mean about like you don't fit. There. That's what I mean about our, our people being traumatized from mm. from their experience like personally yeah. i even have a and i'll share this because um you know i got permission to yeah but yeah. um <laughs> my, my my brother yeah. um is honestly someone who is traumatized from church mm. any yeah. mention of church like but he he completely confides in me with like asking me to pray for him and yeah. stuff like that yeah and the reason why my brother's so um traumatized from church was when he was the first one in the youth to get a girl pregnant mm. and that wow. was something like yeah. Man, but he so, dealt with yeah. so much shame. He was only eighteen at the time. Wow. Sixteen, when, um, the girl was sixteen. Uh, my sister in law, and they're still they're still together, and they have four beautiful girls. That's awesome. And honestly, mm. like it's Come so on. sad when I see my brother, mm. like my own my own also, mm. who I look up to, who every time I mention church or every time we talk mm. about church, he has such a traumatized view of church. Yeah, and it's sad because, bro. What if we approach that differently mm. as yeah. as people and as the church? You know, what if we a- actually have those conversations uh, within the church about how yeah. to how to how we can pastorally care about mm. those things? Oh, yeah. um, you know, I, I I found it almost taboo to talk about sex in our church. Yeah, when I grew up, and mm. I thought, man, yeah, real place. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> if if you guys aren't going to teach me, then the world's going to teach me. That's for yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's one of those things I think is I realize um, we need to open up as a church, like as the church. Mm, yeah, yeah. We need to open up those kind of conversations. Yeah. Because I think that's where our, our, our young people and even um, people in general yeah. like uh, are, are trying to find answers that the church has, but because it's taboo and we don't really want to yeah. talk about it. And it's, oh, we don't talk about that here. Mm. We don't talk about alcohol yeah, here. Hard. We don't, you know, touch on those basics. Yeah, man. Um, and we don't allow those in those church in our church doors. Yeah. That's that's where I feel like the 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 is happening. The huge gap is is between yeah. um, people's mo- Sundays and Mondays. I want to go back to um, we. Oh, I think I I kind of touched on maybe the lack of relatable leaders within church. If that makes sense. Mm. Mm. Um, I've 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 experienced it on the other side where 
there are great leaders within church yeah. who have shown me awesome examples of how to lead within church. Hundred. And not just be a be a be a Christian and, and separate yourself from everyone else, but be a Christian but still be involved yeah. with with your area and with people of your community. Yeah. Mm. One of the people who've given me a great example of being a Christian, yeah. not just in church but also outside. Yeah. In our community is Kujon. And he is one of our church leaders out at oh he's one of our pastors out at um Greater West. Mm. Yeah. And um bro, he's he's constantly at like as much work as he does in church, yeah. He's he's matching it or if not doing more in the community. Yeah, hard. And bro, bro, there's so many names I could drop. But I think the best leaders are the ones who don't just keep that in church, mm. but bring it out. And yeah. it speaking out. of that gap, close that gap. Yep. And yeah. and like not even within church, even bosses. Like there was one place I went to yesterday. Yeah. In uh, Penrith. Yeah. And then um normally like a waitress or someone will come and serve you, right? Mm. But the person who served us was the manager of that whole thing. Like was the yeah. boss. Yeah, and he was the one that made our food, brought it out for us. Yeah, yeah. I was right. like, and like he was walking around high fiving all his um stuff, stuff. And I was like, see, I would love to work for someone like that. Yeah, you no, know, yeah. like someone who bridges that gap, and like leadership, and I like think of companies now who are just mm. bosses who lead and manage it, yeah. just do so well at bridging that gap. Yeah, that's true. And they entrust you. Yeah, like yeah I think what you're talking about bridging that gap mm. that's it's such an important thing yeah going yeah. back to what you're talking about with issues in church and um, yeah. something like how you t- shared the story about your brother yeah sometimes like the church gets amnesia <laughs> oh. and mm. forgets forgets that the church is not perfect yeah. Yeah. yeah that the individuals aren't perfect the pastor is not perfect mm. and yeah. we all have a story Hello. and we <laughs> all have sin none of us yeah. is without sin yeah. uh, so um one thing is like uh, when we find out <laughs> all right look there was a okay there was another to- very similar story yeah. she, a girl she had come up to me in church and we we're just talking she was a friend of mine and she said oh i'm pregnant okay Straight away, I know. Okay, she's not married. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but you don't say, "Oh, you're not." <laughs> oh. Yeah. Need I remind you <laughs> oh, that yeah. it is a sin? You know, thou she, shall. It you know, mentions right? in. So when she said that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, "Oh, you know, congrats, blah blah." blah. She she's been in church for years, and she yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you don't need to say, "Hey, that's a sin." They, mm. Sometimes people don't need reminders. They know. Yeah, they okay. know. <laughs> sometimes they know. Bro. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes some brothers need remind, like actual knowledge. Yeah, like, yeah. hey, bro, that's actually not the best thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yes. But then there's people that have been in church that know. And then, so she was talking, talking. Then another guy comes over. And then, um, and then <laughs> oh, she, no. she's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And then um, she goes, I was just telling um, Frosty that, um, that I'm pregnant. And then he's like, ah, what? Whose is it? Do you know whose it is? Oh my, oh my gosh. So like, I just wanted to... High five. Bless her, mate. You wanted to lay hands. I just wanted to, like just wanna, I just wanted <laughs> to slap some blessings. Yeah, bro. <laughs> like, like a, bro so then, I um, you did. So then she's like, huh? Of course I know who it, whose it is. He goes, yeah, but you're not even married. And I'm like... Wow. She, like, what do you want her to do, bro? She, it's already done. <laughs> like, yeah. Right. And, you know, sometimes like, even that rush to oh, yeah. get married... Get married before oh, people find no, out no, no, that no. you had sex before marriage. Mm. Was that shotgun weddings? Eh? It's shotgun weddings, right? Yeah. But is that like, what you call them? Yeah, yeah shotgun weddings. Yeah. Like yeah. hurry up and get married yeah. because you don't actually want people to find out that your kids had yeah. sex before marriage. Yeah. But going back to exactly that, it's that sometimes these stuff happens in church, or sometimes it happens like our youth, or even not even our youth. Sometimes our elders get into dramas sometimes because we are human. Yeah, mm. and that's what it is. It's one. We need to be graceful yep. for, mm. first we need to be graceful for the one that doesn't know much, like mm-hmm. just walks in the doors, um, you know, know much as in Christianity wise. Mm. Yeah. And then also people in leadership, we need to have, be graceful for them. So that's another hot tale, um, the whole tension between grace and truth. Yeah, bro. <laughs> How much, where's the line? Definitely. <sighs> yeah, man. I listened to a sermon on that, yeah, it was beautiful. Was it mine? <laughs> <laughs> No, but to bring it back to um, um, our hot tala, uh this episode, um, do you think that in most cases, when it comes to our Polynesian churches, yeah. 
that to many of our young people could slowly see the church as being irrelevant. Irrelevant? Yeah. I think so. I think definitely not interested or yeah. not interesting. Yeah. Because um, I'll tell you what, bro. I, 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 have, I have this funny, like, <laughs> way of thinking about about um, churches and yeah. how we can make it relatable to people. Mm. You know, um, I grew up in, Sa- in like Samoan churches, yep. AOG, and, and I love those churches and I, I love the foundations that were mm. based from those. Same, Honestly, some of the, my, my favorite memories are from, yeah, from, from church, yeah. Yeah. from Samoan churches, and I love them. Um, I got saved in one yep. and I, I love that church. I, I have no hate whatsoever towards that church. But one of the things I, I remember thinking was, I think, I felt like our people were so, and the way we ministered a lot mm. um, was performance based. Oh, like so many of our <laughs> so many so many of Triggered. our people, <laughs> so many of <sighs> our people were great performers. Yeah, but taking those performances into our real life, yeah, I don't really think. Um, so every Sunday after Sunday school, there was um, there was this. Uh, I'm not sure what it's called, but you basically um, get up with your with your um, with your class, and you yeah, like yeah. you yeah. do um, uh, like you Why just say a uh, your, your class uh, memory, yeah. memory verse. So your Sunday school class. Our Sunday school, yeah. After your Sunday school class, you um, actually practice a memory verse with yeah. actions, action. and every Sunday you get up with in actions. front of the church, yeah, <laughs> with TikTok actions. <laughs> <laughs> those are so the OG TikTok. <laughs> Like we would get up, we would get up and 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 do those actions with yeah, our yeah. with our thing. And I remember saying that because my knowledge of Samoan language is pretty, like um, you know, it's I'm learning, I'm learning. <laughs> but basically, um, we would practice these verses, memory yeah, yeah. verses, and like I would get so mad at myself if I didn't get those verses right. But basically, I'd get on this, I'd get on the on on um the stage, and I would practice out those, would would perform it. Mm. And I remember thinking. After those um, verses were performed, yeah. I had no idea what, what I was saying up there. Mm. After, I totally forgot it. I totally lost it. And I remember yeah. thinking, man, do our people like have that kind of mentality? Like with with our performancing, with performancing, with performance. Yeah, like, yeah. is you know, in, in realities and with our people back in the islands, mm. performance was a huge thing. Yeah, you know, like we used to. <laughs> I remember. Um, we used to have some have some friends, you know, kind of ask us like, "Oh, you should come check out our skit that we're doing," you know, the oh, left behind kind of things. You know? oh, <laughs> and I just, I, I personally feel like, um, you know, those were methods that we grew up with. Yeah. Sunday school, White Sunday, you know, we grew up with those methods of like, you know, that's how we, mm. our our churches knew to minister to us. Yeah. As young people, but I think that our realities are so different now that those methods are honestly like. Ancient, so <laughs> you know I, what I mean. I yeah. want to touch on that too, because I think the the disinterest and the church becoming irrelevant is due to the fact that times are now changing. Yeah, <laughs> say that again. It's a different era, man. Different era. You different know, and honest, it did work back then. It did. <laughs> yeah, it did. It was effective. It was but beautiful. then when kids grow up, and you have things like social media. You yep. have things like TikTok that comes into play. Ain't nobody thinking about in, a skit. <laughs> all right, in 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 things that kids are now available, no, in things that are available to kids nowadays. Yeah, yeah. Like it's mm. like of course they're going to be disinterested, and of like of course they're going to see church as irrelevant. Times are changing, Some and it's hard for churches to keep up with how times are changing. Yeah, I and think that's. I think it's powerful between trying to figure out. Um, how can we keep the same message? Mm. How can we keep the same grace mm. and have love for people with the same message but different methods? Different. Oh, okay. M&M. I, think I see what you did. M&M. Mm. I see what you did there. Message. <laughs> method. Mm. That's another church thing, eh? The, the, <laughs> the message the same. stays the same, <laughs> but the method. <laughs> <laughs> and then the points always have to, the three heard, different points say I heard a pastor <laughs> say that. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor right. from LA say that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was thinking um, for the, what do you call it? Like the uh, when we touched base on it, on stereo, oh, what was stereotypes? Yeah. What was episode four? This is, nope. Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, manhood. Oh, no, no, no. It was the one that I led, the, the hot teller. It was the cultures. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I feel like, like, um, touchy base back to that. That's, um, I feel like that's why we, uh, the youth find it very irrelevant because I think they just get turned off from all the, the culture behind, um, um, what uh, the po- Polynesian churches, um, yeah, like, obviously what they, how do you say it, put out there to yeah, yeah. to to the youth, and they just think you know, oh, like that's a, you know, I don't want to be that. That's like, yeah, fresh, think, you know, uh, yeah, you know what I mean? I, yeah, <laughs> can I touch on that as well? <laughs> touch, me, touch me, I mean, <laughs> touch it. I, I think you guys have seen this too, where a lot of. Especially in our Samoan churches, they've taken uh, stuff in the culture at the time that was cool and try to make it Christian. <laughs> <laughs> I remember doing the Azonto dance. <laughs> hey! Jesus. No, Jesus. <laughs> bro, was, yeah, bro, so, so yeah. going on this, was, like exactly what you're saying, yeah, yeah. with performance base, yeah, is that some. Okay, now picture this, yeah? A guy or a girl, like whoever it is, struggling with church, struggling with their Christianity, yeah. dealing with real life situations <laughs> out there, maybe getting abused or whatever. Yeah. And the only truth is their friends at work or the drugs or out or gangs. Okay, so that's what you're facing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, then <laughs> you're told, hey, shh, come to church and learn the skit. What's <laughs> all <laughs> Yeah, like you know, for for, for some reasons, yeah, when you put it like that, <laughs> no, 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 but, 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 hold on, I'm not finished. Yet. Oh, sorry, 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 hold sorry. on. So come and learn this skit, yeah. <laughs> so you learn this skit, okay? Who do you perform it for? <laughs> Old people <laughs> to look at you and get oh, good boy, the, the yeah. empty chairs. Very now good. you are holy, yeah. <laughs> you know. So what are you saying? I just want to put it out. Who who here? Out of just us, like when it came to the skits, I'm glad. I'm glad I never got to play. <laughs> Jesus. I never got to play the. No, I was Jesus. Yeah, I've, been <laughs> I, I, I've been Jesus too. Jesus. I thought Jesus too. <laughs> so like, if, you, if I said you the photo, you would laugh so hard. No, so we're showing the photo. We're we're showing you. Oh, it's on my mom's account. Uh, make sure you block everyone here, please. <laughs> no, you're saying this? No, but that's a funny memory. Like, I just wanted to yeah. share a little funny memory. But I think going on that is like, so one, we're not getting it. Some Okay, first, I'm not, you know, putting down these ways. There was a time oh, where definitely. that was, and still to this day, there Bro. might be churches out there yeah. that, that actually works. Okay? Yeah, of um, course. And that God yeah. moves in those skits and in those items, yeah? He definitely did. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. He did. I loved it, bro. Honest, honest. I loved it. Okay. Bro, and um, skits that actually like. Right. So, but what, but what I'm saying is, is that not only that, then we're teaching our kids to be more performance based. Yeah. And to, um, and then we're teaching our, you know, our people in church, our church people, to be more, um, to be more entertained. Like, oh, come and do a nice item for us. Ah, oh, that was lovely. You know, but sometimes we're missing the core of the message, the message. that was, there was a savior that died yeah. for us, no yeah. matter who we are, that loves us and that has grace yeah. for us. Mm. You know, no matter mm. where you are in your walk with him, he loves you. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we're, sometimes we're missing that. You yeah. know, I kind of had that feeling when I was portrayed as Jesus. Yeah, like I, I was like, oh man, I feel like you know Tom Cruise right now. You know, like <laughs> you know, like when I was doing it, I was full acting it. Just for because I wanted the recognition, I wanted yeah. the praise, but in reality, you should have been, you know. Right. But then, okay. first, <laughs> <So, laughs> right? You, we've, you've played Jesus. You played Jesus. I played Jesus at a family reunion. Have you played Jesus? I think I played the tree. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. The story of Moses, the tree, the burning <laughs> bush. Oh, I the am burning good. bush. <laughs> <laughs> but um, sorry. Um, what, what were you saying? I shouldn't have gone the off tree. topic. Okay, so we've played Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Who taught us to play Jesus? Like, so mm. this is how we walked around here <laughs> yeah, in the play. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. That's how we walked yeah. around. Yeah. And then it was like, like you're holy. Yeah, like yeah. you're holier than mm. that. Yes, Jesus is holy. Yes. In these skits, Jesus is, do not touch me, you sinner. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And I think oh, that's no. the perception. Oh, no. You fool. That's, that's the perception. <laughs> right? You fool. <laughs> and I I think maybe low key that's where we get the perception of the separation, the gap. Yeah. Oh. 
Say that again, bro. Let's go. Come on. And like from that, I think maybe, maybe because I'm not. I don't yeah. Know, maybe no. that's where we, from a young age, learn the gap that we were speaking about earlier from yeah, yeah. from the listener to yeah. the pastor or the fifi Yeah, yeah. From I don't know, the boss to the worker. Yeah, yeah man. The uh, teacher amen. to the student. Like authority. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Any any figure of authority because. Yeah. Everything that we did, the portrayal was that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah hard. There's this pastor out in New York City, and mm-hmm. um, he was praying for these two guys. I don't know if they were rappers or um, or basketball players, but he's pretty involved in the community in, mm. in uh, New York yep. City. Okay. And he, he had told them, he said, can I pray for you? Yeah. Right? And they yeah. said, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they don't go to church that mm. much. you know. But the first thing they did is take off their hat. And they were like, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I remember that, yeah. So then he says, why are you taking your hat off? And they're like, oh, it's, you know, like, mm. they, they they thought they needed to take the hat off. Yeah. And he said, you know, if if Jesus died on the cross naked and we're praying to him, do you think he really matters about some little fabric on your head? Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that right there, that's, that's tough. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, to this day, I'll probably all, I'll probably still take off yeah. my hat sometimes. Of when course, I pray. yeah. Okay, it's a respect thing, and um, I get that. So if you do that, that's on you. Yeah. yeah. But to try to force people to start to do traditions that they have no idea about, because yeah, he asked yeah. them, "Why do you do that?" They said, "Oh, you know, my mother used to tell me to." Yeah. Or um, like it, uh, you know, at my church, that's what we have to do. Yeah. But where this this pastor from the, um, from New York was just trying to tell them, "Hey, look." God meets you where you're at. Mm. You know what I mean? And I think that's such a, like, it's it's a reality, mm. yeah. you know, of a lot of what this youth are feeling. And yeah. I think maybe to bridge that gap, in, instead of spreading the message of if you do this, 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 and then do this, 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 then you want to go to hell, maybe speak about that side of Jesus. Yeah, and it real. and it and it's not that one is true and one isn't. No, Jesus is all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, yes, hundred percent. He is all of that. I th- I think I know but what you mean. Like we we didn't we didn't perform we performed the holy Jesus, which is you know true true, but we didn't perform the relational Jesus. Mm. <laughs> Which is a <laughs> silly. Oh, silly. One more time. One more time, out, please. <laughs> one more time, please. Oh no. yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> no, for real. Like that's a that's a real thing. Yeah. Like we we never showed. Um, we I don't want to say never, but like there was sometimes in in most performances and most skits that our people performed, Jesus wasn't very relational. He was always standoffish. He was always up here. I was like, bro, bring Jesus down here. He's all yeah. good. Because that's yeah. what he did. That's what he, he came did. down. Yeah. Literally did that. Literally. I remember, I remember I did a skit. Shout out to um, Matt Samuelu who's watching. Oh, oh Matt. Matt. He's, he's, he's a good, oh, my good mate. Um, we, we did a skit and this guy told me, literally told me, and I'm playing Jesus. Mm. And he literally goes to me, I'm going to go hard. So like, you know, he, the, the, the story was like, he's he, in the middle of his failure. Mm. I'm gonna come and and I'm, I need to stand away from like stand up on the stage. He's on the floor, and it's from the wow. stage to the floor, there's about like two steps that yeah. go down. And Matt, some, Matt Matty, um, literally cries, and I'm shook. I didn't know he was gonna go that hard. Like this guy, bro, Hollywood, give him his, give him, Oscar, <laughs> give him his contract, give man. him a Grammy, boys. <laughs> so this guy, this guy, is literally crying, and he goes to me. He's yelling out at me like. Like, where were you? Where were you, Jesus? So then I'm standing up the top, I'm like, mm. <laughs> I was standing here. No. This is how I had to literally stand holy. And I'm just, and I remember always thinking back in that. And I'm thinking, oh, I wish I could, I could, I could have shown Jesus more relational. I, re- I really wish Bro, I literally could have picked him up and, and held him in my arms yeah. and hugged him, you know, when yeah. he cried. This is my own, this is like a close also of mine. He's crying. Yeah. Like, yeah. Personally, I would have done that. But because I was playing Jesus, you know, I had to play Jesus holy. as holy. <laughs> the holy. Yeah, did you want to cry? So like, I wanted to cry. First, I was shook because, like, oh, he really went there. But, you know, when I see my also crying, oh, bro. There's so much in that, bro. They <laughs> I'm done. So then if you're someone who's watching this, your first time in church and you see that, yeah. and you're like, how 
how is he not crying? Yeah. Or how <laughs> is he not is wanting it? to pick up this guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you yeah. think, this is Jesus. This is uh, who everyone in this building is here for. Yeah. I think Broken. <laughs> sometimes, just quickly, sometimes even these, pod, uh, these podcasts, sometimes even these skits, Sometimes yeah. can be so like judgmental yeah. without without knowing because mm. <laughs> sometimes it starts off with a co- uh, it's a part of you with a fake drink. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, not the <laughs> not the and then the the, oh, the, the, the fake the, smoking yeah. and then the dancing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but and then. And then Jesus comes in, or they die, or something, and then Jesus <laughs> comes and saves them. No, like, like for real, this is how, like, you know, drinking. It's, it's, the, it's the car crash. It's the car crash, or it's the, the car crash. The car or, crash or the first. Jesus comes back, and he can't see you because you've been drinking. <laughs> Has he seen that? Jesus, don't forget oh. about me. Have you oh. seen that? Well, someone left oh. behind him. Yeah, oh. like, hey, I'm here. I'm, and Jesus can't see them. Like, he's walking and going, I can only see my holy. People that didn't drink or smoke or have sex. <laughs> oh, yo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, sometimes we need to do these skits. If, like, if honestly, if you feel moved to do these skits, do them. Yeah. But maybe just, maybe just look into Christ a bit deeper and maybe uh, understand some things. Like, there's a, there's a whole relational side to Jesus mm. that I feel like people are missing out on. Yeah. And honestly, and it's our young people too. And I feel like that relational side of Jesus is something that needs to be spoken of more mm. and can help bridge that gap between the people's Sunday yes. to Monday. Yes. If I can take one thing from my Sunday to G- to to Monday, it's Jesus. Mm. Okay. Mm. Yeah. You know? And bro, can we touch on oh, Joe, what did you say before about maybe in the skits we are portraying holy Jesus, holy Jesus holy, yeah, yeah. Relational. rather than relational Jesus? Yeah, yeah. And I think that's the answer to the gap. Yeah. Is yes, Jesus is holy, but Hard. just as much as he is holy, he is relational. Yeah. And for all our brothers and sisters who have a bad experience of church and all you've ever heard is the holy side, can I tell you that as much as he is holy, he is relational. Yeah. And he knows, trust me, he knows what you're going through. Hard Preach to. it, bro. Hard he to. knows what you're going through. Come on. Andrew. So if there is a chance that you fall upon this, oh, please know, out of everything that we've said, yeah, he knows. Yeah, he knows what you're going through. Jeez, give me a tissue. If you know, you know. But if you don't know, God knows. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's okay, get it. Okay. Okay. Let's get it. Okay. Let's get it. Okay. Oh. Whoa, man. <sighs> Uh-huh. All right. Well, the other question I want to bring on um, to the conversation was, what part could we play as a source? This podcast. What co- what part could we play? Okay. The part that we can play. Yep. Now we've had an awesome discussion about it. Yep. And we know what no we have been on both sides of the coin of you no know, bad experiences with this, yep. and we've also seen and experienced the good side. Yeah, 100. And so now that we know this, we're well equipped. Yeah. I think let's go do it, like, let's go put it in action, eh? Yeah. We know our reality <laughs> behind not just church, behind this, once the camera switched off, we yeah. know how our reality looks like. We know people in our world. Yeah. We know our community. Who relate to this. Hard. Yeah. Um, Let, bro, let's go out. When I agree, one of the biggest struggles that I have when I first started coming back to church was the pastor or any pastor would say, show me your five closest friends and I'll show you your future. And that was more you sometimes like you need to be around holy people, yeah, people yeah. that are in church and stuff. Mm. <laughs> and for me, that kind of has some truth, but I think it's more, um, maybe show me your five closest people you let influence you. Yeah. If that makes sense, and I'll show you your future. Sometimes that doesn't always look like just having five mates that are from church. Yeah. 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 My five closest boys, I mean, besides you boys, I just realized, oh, one more and we're five. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. But <laughs> but some of my some of my closest mates 
are not from church. Yeah. And that's actually all yeah. of us. Yeah. yeah. Some of my, my closest friends aren't Christians. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think sometimes instead of um, letting people know what they did wrong, yeah. letting people know what they did was a sin, instead of letting people know that, l- maybe let people know that you're there for them and that you love them. 100. You know what I mean? Sometimes like the story before I was saying about, you know, this girl, she got pregnant. She didn't need a reminder about what she did yeah. was a sin. What she needed was affirmation that she's going to be a good mother, that God loves her and that yeah. God has his hand over her child. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? I like <laughs> what's done is done. Yeah. Sometimes do not keep, try to remind people yeah, that they've sinned. Yeah. Address it if you need yeah. it. Only address it if you actually have authority to mm. address it. Mm-hmm. If no one asks you, don't address it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's something that we could do, you know. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. I've, everyone covered it up. I think. Um, just for me, I'm just, I'm just, just keep encouraging. Um, I want to just keep encouraging everyone to just, um, just keep. Uh, looking for support. Like, don't be, yeah. don't be, um, don't be self. How do you say? Self centered. Righteous. Self righteous. Mm. Like. Man, like, if you need if you need to talk, talk to someone. Like, uh, I can't stress that fact, man. And um, it's it's just funny yeah. because like I, I'm I'm gonna actually like talk about this in my be support as well. So yeah, I'm cool. yeah. And um, I'm so hungry. <laughs> and yeah, like, man, you gotta reach out. Like, you gotta talk. Like, you have people. Um, you know, if you don't have people, yeah, bro. You're you're watching people right now that, <laughs> that could actually hit you up. Yeah. Right for real. And we we're all for it, you know? Yeah. And yeah, that's me. Um, I just wanna touch on like everything that we've touched on today. Um but it's such a beautiful discussion that we've had mm. today. Yeah. This episode. Honestly. For real. These are realities. I'm sure there's so many people who relate mm. but never actually got to voice it out. <laughs> voice it out, yeah. Mm. Um, I feel like there's people or somebody listening that is honestly feeling a real shift in the way they've viewed church or mm. even the way they've um, thought of Jesus. Yeah. And and honestly, that's what we're here. That's what we're doing. That's our heart. This podcast and the heart of this podcast was to basically normalize these kind of conversations. Yeah. Change our people's thinking mm. or encourage our people's yeah. thinking. And that's something I feel like we're playing a huge part on yeah. right now, having these conversations. Whoever thought God could use islanders like us? Just four who, normal <laughs> who've ordinary gone, issues, bro. Who've gone Bunch through the issues. realities that we faced and we're yeah. talking about and using this microphone to speak Real, into bro. people's lives, man. <laughs> I love you, man. Yeah, bro. Mm. Oh, bro, can I end it off with just one thing that a pastor once said or like something I just once heard? Yeah. Build bridges, eh, not walls. That's it, man. Build bridges, not walls. That's it. And the story was he met up with different religious leaders. And what he tried to do was find common ground. And what did they speak about? They spoke about footy. <laughs> mm. Like, how easy is that? Different religious leaders. And still he finds a way to build bridges. Yeah. And not love, walls. Uh, yeah, I love that. I love that. Let's keep doing it. Stop trying to look for something that separates us. No. Look for look for something that connects us. Stop comparing. And start sharing. Oh. <laughs> Fire. Are Fire. you a rapper? <laughs> but I'm not a rapper. But I'm not a rapper. Um, like just as we were talking, I have this I have this verse that came to mind and it's a um verse I literally just Googled. I I I remember the words but I can't Mm. Remember verses for some reason, like full on verses. Sinner. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. I, I relate. <laughs> uh the 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 verse I that came to mind and I want to close this this segment off. Yep. Yep. Um with Romans twelve verse one to two. It says and I'm reading from the message version. It says, So here's what I want you to do. God helping you, take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, mm. going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you 
is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become right. so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. Yeah, You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity. God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. And I loved how in the beginning it, so, it talks about um, taking your everyday mm. life yeah. and placing that before God. Yeah. Um, and I think that's honestly like literally what we've put this conversation yeah. in is taking that and taking our everyday life, our Monday, mm. and placing that before God rather than our Sunday. Come on. Come on, somebody. Come on. Can you send me that verse after? Come on. <laughs> That's a real verse. Yeah. That's beautiful. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is it's our hot, hot teller. teller. Hot teller. See, it was real hot. Dang. Dude, and thank you so much, hot, boys. Hot, hot, thank you so much, boys, for having that conversation. I really honor you guys for doing that mm. and going there. And um, if you guys have any uh, comments, mm, I'm sure. Please. Um, you mm. know, if you want to hate too, all oh, good. <laughs> please don't hate. <laughs> nah, if you guys have any comments or things to say, or maybe we touched on something that you feel so, um, you know, you feel the urge to talk to us about yeah. it, bro, message us um, on our Instagram at the Usul Table Talk. And we're happy, we'll happily, we'll happily um, pray with you or conversate with you and respond, and respond uh, well. So, I hope none of the things that we touched on offended you in any way. We love the church and we believe we love, are the church. Yeah. Yeah. Even and if it's like feedback, like to work on stuff, let mm. us know. Yeah. Because we'll see it as a constructive criticism. That's good. We'll see. CC, CC. But um, right now, I'm going to hand it to the Uso for the Bisupo. Bisupo. Supos. The Uso Table Talk Podcast. I think it's Posupos, man. It's Posupos. Oh my days, brother. What's that? Okay, so basically Bisupo is um, just a segment where we just encourage our audience, encourage mm-hmm. each other, yep. and just um, just to end us off with a, you know, a big hi. Yeah. Big up. Yo. Big up. And um, so, yeah, my Bisupo, my corned beef, is yes. about um, loving. Oh, straight. I love straight that. to loving. And um, as individuals, we always hear the term love. Mm-hmm. Oh, love your enemies. And that's facts. Yeah. And it says, uh, it mentions in Luke 6, 27, but I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Yeah. And um, as much, okay, I'm going to be real here. As much as we want to hate them, as much as we want to hate our enemies, God will always direct us back to him in order yeah. for us to understand that only God can be the judge of our enemies and not ourselves. Mm. And in saying that, it also mentions in the Old Testament that we need to love our neighbors too. Mm. And um, man, that's uh, I want to like h- highlight that uh, loving our neighbors yeah. as much as our enemies. Yeah. Um, just in this in the segment because it says it, um, it mentions in Le- Leviticus nineteen eighteen. Yeah. Oh, Leviticus, you Leviticus. shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Mm. And um, yeah, to me. When it says love your neighbor, uh, I don't just see it as your friend or like as someone next to you, yeah. but I also see it as your own loved ones. Yeah. And, and and I feel like that, that message alone is telling us to love our loved ones as well. Yeah. And I want to touch base on that because I think that the world right now and the year we're in, which is 2020, is a season that I believe most of us will always remember. Yeah. yeah. Uh, not because of how the media depicts it, but because of the personal challenges that we've experienced. Mm. And man, like, sorry, it's real for me. 150,200. <laughs> and um, from the challenge, from the challenges that have um, that have been happening around us, yeah, it's been pretty easy for us to lose sight and focus of the ones that mean the most yeah. to us. Yeah. And yeah, it's a real place and a real thing that catches us off guard where we're the most busiest and... Um, and then it doesn't hit us until we've hit our most vulnerable moments. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but um I love so that. To everyone out there listening, watching, browsing through your feeds, browsing. and listening to this. I want to share three points. So the first point is pray, reflect, and breathe. Ooh. Oh. Everyone do a breathe. Can you just do a praying um sound as well? Thank you, Jesus. 
<laughs> the second one is um, soften your heart. Don't hold your grudges. Let go of it, man. And, um, it's freedom. It's freedom. Yeah. And then the third one will be keep showing love in your highs and your lows. Valleys. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 the voice every day. <laughs> Don't you ever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, but uh, lose. But yeah, wow. life is life is already too messed up enough for it to be even more messy. Yeah. And uh, we can play the blame game as much as we want, but a real winner would let it go and move on from the past. Mm. The last thing you want is to be on bad terms with a loved one and then never get the chance to get it fixed. Come on, that's powerful, bro. Rich. Anyways, keep showing that love, no matter how hard it can be. But yeah, preach. That's my disciples, fams. I love you guys. I love you guys. I love you guys. That was straight beef, super, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys. No beef here, bar. So like nons, I'm encouraged by that. Also, thank you, this man. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was our pisupo. Mm. Man, we hope you enjoyed the feed that we just gave you. Because yeah, honestly, I hope was, you're full. That was a lot. That was, that was, that that was, was sick, you, bro. But right now, I'm going to get the whistle rolling. He's going to close us off for prayer. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, we've got a little surprise for you there, too. <laughs> yeah. No let's pressure. Go. No pressure. <laughs> Can you do it in someone? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you practicing? Let's go. <laughs> okay. It's all my talk tomorrow, more and more. For Kaya, more than ever, no name. Yeah, um. yeah, that's it. <laughs> hey, you're doing so good. You're doing so good. Nah, I didn't want to bother, anyways. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for this time, Father. And thank you for this awesome conversation that we had. Yes, we Lord. pray that it blessed people. Thank you. That Jesus. it healed people. That it gave people maybe different, different insights, different perspectives. Mm. And uh, Father, I just thank you that you were in this place, that you were all over that conversation. Harder. And I pray, mm. Father God, that people left this conversation feeling uplifted, Come on. feeling encouraged, yes, and Lord. feeling loved. Because that's what this is all about. And Father, I pray pray for people's weeks, pray yes, for Lord. people's Mondays. Yes, Lord. And I ask that Come everyone on. goes into this week feeling blessed, feeling excited, yes, and um, feeling encouraged to take on this next week and everything that's about to happen. We... Thank you, Father God. We um, yeah, just thank you for this awesome time in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's go. Let's go. Huge shout out to um, Hills Podcast and Video Room for letting us use the studio. Shout, shout out, out to yeah. Bella Vista Hotel. Thank also, you very much. Shout out to my fiance Moana. I love you. Oh, shout out to my mom. Oh, oh, shout out to my wife. Oh, Excuse no. me. Hey, hey, my wife. Shout out to my <laughs> wife, Miss Morgan Renee Curly Frost. I love you. Shout out to my mom, I love you so much because you're such an awesome lady that loves to give critical um, things. <laughs> I love you, mom. Uh, is it my turn? Shout out. Um, shout out to my mom, um, to, to my family. Shout out to the boys, I love you. Shout out to Francis. <laughs> so I've definitely cut it up. That needs to be cut out. <laughs> Wait, I'll do another shout out. Shout out to Francis from the Fungaraya Boys High School. Yeah. <laughs> my name is Francis. <laughs> nah, hey, actually, shout out. Shout out to my mom. I love you, mom. Yes, I cry. Return of the man. Yes, I cry. Return of the man. Return of the man. Welcome to the world. Episode 5. Here I am. Return of the man. Once again. Return of the man. Return of the man. Return of the man. I want a Big Mac. <laughs> I want a Big Mac. Not the Big Jack. Five. Not the Big Jack. The Big Mac. We love you. God we bless. Love you. We love you. Love the See Big Jack. Thank you.